My favorite eight picks of the 2024 WNBA draft came at picks 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and uh, 24, 25. Let me go through them. Uh, Caitlin Clark, of course, is the obvious number one pick that is everybody's favorite pick. The Indiana Fever guard will team with uh, Aaliyah Boston, last year's number one pick, in a wonderful dynamic duo. Caitlin Clark, my analytics say, is the best um, WNBA draft prospect uh, since I've been doing analytics since 2010. Her uh, guard numbers top the projections of uh, Skylar Diggins, Kelsey Plum, and Sabrina Ionescu. So I'm very high on her, uh, as is everyone else. <laughs> uh, number two pick Cameron Brink of Stanford playing for the LA Sparks. She'll be their flagship. She'll be their future. She replaces Neko Ogumake, the 2016 WNBA champion who now is in Seattle. Um, Cameron is the future of this team. It's a long rebuilding process for the Sparks to get back to championship level, but uh, they've, they've got a good start right there. Uh, number three pick will be uh, Camila Cardosa, the 6667 center from Brazil who led South Carolina to a national championship. Wonderful pick there. Most people had her projected to go four. So the fact that the sky got her at three is is a big is a big uh, feather in their cap. Just a just a wonderful player to, to, for the future of that team. It's rebuilding as well. Um, four and five, uh, Rakia Jackson and J.C. Sheldon are fine players. I just think they missed out on some potential all stars in pick six, seven, eight, with uh, Aaliyah Edwards, who was taken by the Washington Mystics. Uh, Angel Reese, who was taken by the Chicago Sky, and Elisa Peely, who was taken by the, um, who am I forgetting? The uh, Minnesota, Minnesota Lynx. Um, I love Peely's game. She reminds me of Adrian Dantley, who can shoot threes. Wonderful post-up game, who can also space the floor. Number six pick, Aaliyah Edwards. Seeing her team with Paige Beckers lets you know that she knows how to play that pick-and-roll game and and be a defensive stopper as well. Uh, I see her being an all-star in the future. Um, and pick number seven, Angel Reese, has more upside than anybody. She showed her junior season she might be the best player in this draft. Her senior year was a bit of a setback, but even her setback shows she's still an all-star projection. So to get her at seven was a real steal for the Chicago Sky. That's why Jeff Pagliaca is my executive of the year prediction pick. Because to trade up to get her on number seven when they had the number eight pick on, on a Sunday night trade before the draft just showed great foresight. And he got the, the woman he wanted. And the pick that the trade that he made back in February, trading Kalia Copper for the number three pick to get Cardosa, another great act of foresight. So Pagliaca, I thought, had the best draft of anybody at picks three and seven with um, Cardosa and Reese. Um, that covers about six players I think have all-star potential. And there are two other young women who I believe had injuries not fell them would also be in that all-star category. That's what makes this the deepest WNBA draft ever because I don't go around throwing out all-star and WNBA uh, MVP and all-league all projections willy-nilly. I, th I think um, this is a special draft. And two women at picks number 24 and 25 who were ignored were Elizabeth Kitley of Virginia Tech, the 6'6 center, who um, now goes to the Las Vegas Aces after she had an ACL uh, surgery cut her season short in March. It's going to be a long way back for her, but she is a, you know, a top 50 talent had she not got hurt. Uh, and I even saw an All-Star game or two in her future. She really is a bright player. And same thing with Mackenzie Holmes, the 6'3 power forward center for Indiana. Um, she al also has that same potential as Kitley does, and she's going to pick 25 with the Seattle Storm. Um, she had knee surgery. She's not going to play in 2024, um, but she, uh, you know, these women in 2025 in the future have, have a real future. <laughs> um, that's the thing about the WNBA draft. A lot of these players come into the league at age 22, 23, and you might not see them excel right away because there's only 12 teams and it's tough to get a job. It's not like 30 teams in the, M in the NBA with 17 roster spots. You know, you've got to be one of the 150 best players in the world to get a roster spot here. 
And just because you don't make it at 23 doesn't mean you won't make it at 26. So these women have time, and uh, that's why I thought it was very wise for the Aces and the Storm to pick the injured players because those are top 10 WNBA draft picks in any other draft. So, and, in, and also in any other year, it would be a top five pick. So great picks by the Storm and, and the Aces there. So anyway, that's my humble opinion. Thank you very much.